Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Delaney Fisher. And we just recorded an episode with our guest and she truly blew our minds. Uh, this is a guest we would love to have back on. We did an episode about exploring fetishes with the incredible Goody Howard. She is a world-renowned sexologist, educator, and consultant. She actually teaches sexual skill workshops and offers sex positive professional development opportunities. She just, oh, man, the amount of takeaways in this episode. Yes. And like fun takeaways that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to try that. <laughs> yeah. Whether you are single and looking to explore you know, more ways to be connected with your body in a sexual way, whether you're in a relationship and you want to add some simple things to spice it up, whether you want to explore more fetishes and kinks. I mean, she just covered so much ground in the interview. It was amazing. Oh my God. Like how to have fun, you know, giving oral sex and how to do like rethink the 69ing and all. Like yeah. she said, so everything was a hot tip and takeaway that you're like, this makes so much sense. I cannot wait to do this or try this or, you know what I mean? Like, it yeah. Was so, and we just laughed the entire time. God, <laughs> it is fucking hilarious. So funny. You are going to love this episode. So Truly. Much. Yes. Um, and if you want to follow Goody, you can follow her on all social media at Ask Goody, A S K G O O D Y. Her website is askgoody.com and she's offering our listeners um, a special little discount if you guys want to buy any of her merchandise or anything on her website. It's 20% off with the code helpless. So it's very sweet that she did that. And uh, we really encourage you guys to go check out her website. She, she teaches things called rideology and strokeology classes where she teaches <laughs> people it. how to like ride dick it's like oh my god i just i just adore her so um before we get into the episode i am continuing to be on tour i will be in uncasville this weekend at comics roadhouse and then next weekend i'm coming to salt lake city i'll be at the wise guys comedy club i've been wanting to perform there for a long time and i think we've got some salt lake city helpsters so i'm very very excited for that and then i'll be in vegas burbank so many more dates coming up you can go to kelseycook.com get those tour date tickets and please go watch my special the hustler on youtube um as we are recording this uh, a couple months before this episode comes out the the special has crossed over half a million views in oh, the first two weeks of being out which is exciting that's so exciting dude Thanks. Thank so you. Awesome. Yes. Um, Delaney, what's going on with you? Yeah. Hey, if you want to uh, listen to my business podcast, the Minimalist Business Podcast, you can head over to DelaneyFisher.com. It's a private show, but it's completely free. And we just talk about building um, and scaling your dream business and career. We talk about mindful business practices and productivity habits and, and all that good stuff. Um, the feedback that I've been getting is people really want me to branch out in more like the career consulting space as well. So while I, I, you know, usually work with mental health and wellness professionals on their business and media and branding and all of that, um, I might be kind of offering some, some career coaching consulting services as well. So if you're interested in that, feel free to come on over, even if you don't, you know, quite fit the bill for mental health and wellness. Um, and I'm very excited about that. And um, yeah, so if you're, you're experiencing a transition, a career pivot of some kind, uh, you'll be uh, perfect for that podcast as well. DelaneyFisher.com. There it is. Amazing. Okay, guys, we feel very confident already that you're going to fucking <laughs> love this interview with Ask Get a Giddy. notebook. Get, Get a, a notebook. notebook. Or a phone. You yes. Want to take notes. <laughs> yeah, truly. I am going to listen to it back and take notes because uh, it's just so good. So, okay, guys, here's our interview. All right, Goody, thank you so much for being here with us today. I've been a fan of yours online for <laughs> almost three years now. We were just talking about trying to figure out when I started following you. And uh, <laughs> I'm awesome. so excited to have you on. Uh, you have a shirt. I know some of our listeners 
only listen, some people watch on YouTube, but I have to tell people that your shirt says penis genius. And it does. <laughs> I, God, I just, I'm so excited about this already. So, <laughs> so you are a sexologist. And yes. I, we've got so many questions for you today. I, I want to start by asking how you got into this line of work and what qualifies somebody to be a sexologist. Oh, I'm so glad you asked the second part specifically. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm a sexologist, which basically means that I um, study sex through a scientific lens, human sexuality through a scientific lens. Wow. But what I love to do is take that then hierarchy, you know, over framework and like make it bite sized consumable for the lay person. And Got so it. that is what I do. I take all aspects of human sexuality. Uh, health, hygiene, interpersonal skills, pleasure, sexual activity, gender orientation, attraction, all of it, and just kind of create these little bite-sized shareables for the general public. Um, yeah. So what qualifies me to be a, which is amazing, because people don't never ask that. I've never been asked that. I've been doing oh, this wow. Work. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Because people think that if they enjoy having sex and they enjoy talking about sex, that they can be a sex educator or that they can be a sexologist and or a sex perk, which is not a real thing. It's a marketing term. Yeah. Um, but it's, mm. but it's, it's so much bigger than that, right? So I have my bachelor's in business. I have a master's of social work. I have a master's of public health because human sexuality is social work mm. and sexual health is public health. Yeah. Um, I also have lots of certifications and uh, professional development, CEs and things like that from conferences and specific credentialing type workshops. So anyone can do this if they're committed to doing the work. You don't have to be have master's degrees. It's helpful. Um, yeah. If you're like me, I don't work for anyone else. I work for myself. So when I pitch companies and stuff like that, the master's degrees give them more confidence in paying my rate. Right? Got it. <laughs> so, Got it. Yeah, so yeah. That, it's more for them, less for me, but it's helpful. Um, but you can do this work and not go that route. You can do like certifications and be very, very niche and specific. Um, so so there's that. But I've always been the freaky friend. I've always been the person, <laughs> you know, that people talk to about their sex or relationships. I don't know why people feel that, you know, I'm that person, but yeah. I've all, literally always been that person. I used to be like, if I didn't know, I would try to find out. And I'm older than Google. So <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I am, I am hard catalog, microfiche, doing decimal system years old. So <laughs> I'm very much, you know, in the library trying to figure it out. Um, yeah. And I just, I ran into some people that were doing this kind of work full time. Okay. And I just kind of interviewed them and figured out what their backgrounds were in and how they got to these places. And I just took, just did it. Like I've been doing this 17 years total, yeah. uh, full time for eight and I've been profitable for five. And I say profitable meaning more than $100,000 a year because Amazing. profitable is, the concept of profitable is subjective, right? Sure. Um, yeah. But um, I, was, I did accounting while I was doing this work. I've always done like finance and accounting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then this is like a huge pivot. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, it's, it's, but I, it is. And I, and I just, you know, I, that's the kind of brain that I have. Like, I love the numbers and I love the concept. So I, I, got, I was glad I got to do both. Yeah. Um, but now I'm just glad I do this full time. That's so incredible. Uh, so cool. Uh, before we get into more questions, we always ask our guests what their favorite or least favorite quote is. And mm -hmm. we know that you've got an incredible favorite quote that has to do with sex. So can you share it with our listeners? Of course, everything has to do. Um, so actually, <laughs> the, quote, the quote is, everything in the world is about sex except sex. Sex is about power. And oh, it's it. up until maybe last year, that quote was attributed to Oscar Wilde. But apparently he didn't say it. So okay. I don't know. Who said, we don't know who said it. Yeah. Um, but, but I think that quote is so it's succinct and it's accurate. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think even if I, I don't know if we'll really get into it on this episode about like um, if somebody has a fetish or a kink about being submissive, that is still about mm -hmm. power. It's just maybe yeah. giving up your power in that moment or I, I feel like I'm not even qualified to speak to it. That's why you're here. Well, I mean, but it's true. <laughs> even so people think people think that subs and doms, right? The sub dom dynamic is it is a power dynamic, but right. it's not the power dynamic that you think. Right. Most doms are 
members are, they're not in control in everyday life. Yeah. So they get to be in control in that specific space. And most subs are people that are bosses all the time mm-hmm. and they have to make all the decisions. And then when we get into sexual spaces, we prefer to hand that responsibility over to a trusted human being yeah. to navigate that for us. And even in that is great power because you're giving consent for someone else to kind of drive your boat, right? So um, even in that, like the psychology of that is still very, very much rooted in power. Mm, yes. Um, hi, I'm Delaney and I'm a sub. And I'm a sub as well. And the, But the challenge is this, because I'm a switch. Because my submissiveness runs so deep that if I'm with a partner that requires a dom, I will become that for them because submissively that is what my person needs. Oh, oh. I was just going to ask you that. Like, what if, what if some people's kinks or fetishes don't al- align? Mm-hmm. It just depends on, so sometimes some people are just a sub, hard sub, and they don't view becoming a dom as being a sub. But if I'm with a person, if my partner wants that, if, even if I dom, I have, if I have a dom and that's what they want, like I want you to take control right now, if that's what they say do, then that's what I'm going to do. Right. Interesting, and right. so it's, there's some people that are switches. There's some people that are hardcore subs. I'm a hardcore sub. I can dom if I have to, if that's what's required in the moment. But that's not my preference. Um, but and the, the people that are hardcore doms. And then when you meet these like skeevy guys in the street and they try to tell you they're a dom. Right. <laughs> like, first of all, you shouldn't have to tell me if I have to tell you I'm a lady. I'm not a lady. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? You, you sh- it should be a parent. Correct. But also, they don't understand that they're telling you that they don't have control in their everyday lives. Like they live in their mom's basement and they work at Walmart as a greeter. Like they're not, right, you know, and that's right. not always the case. That's not always the case. Doms don't come for me. Um, <laughs> but typically, the case is they have less decision making power in their everyday life. Okay. And so they have more decision making power in that in those specific spaces. Got it. Mm, okay. Could we scale back a little bit, bit and just talk about like what are fetishes and do we all have them or only okay. some people have them? Oh, everybody does. So Ooh. the difference, first, let me tell you the difference between a fetish and a kink, because a lot of yes. times we do those like, you know, same Z's and they're not. Um, so a fetish is sexual attraction to an object or thing. Okay. Whereas a kink is an atypical sexual behavior. Okay. Okay. So, so the behavior, so there's some things that are both a kink and a fetish. Like if you're a furry, right? A plushie, people that dress up in the mascot costumes, Mm -hmm. that is both a kink and a fetish. It's a fetish because the costume is what makes them feel uh, their most unique, authentic selves. But it's a kink because they have a whole community. And they have their own ways of interacting with each other. And they have their own, like, you know, it's a culture. So it's a kink and a fetish simultaneously. Some other things that are kinks that are very common are like choking, spanking, um, you know, rougher sex. um, Things like that are very, very common uh, kinks that people have. Calling your partner daddy. Like, things like that. Those are very common kinks. Okay. Okay. Uh, common fetishes can be like a foot fetish or like a pregnant girl fetish or maybe you have a race fetish or a size fetish like a body size fetish like so they're very common things that people don't necessarily even think are kinky or that are fetishes that we absolutely have and do and are right, mm. <laughs> right. maybe even just like people who are into blondes versus brunettes that is absolutely a thing or like Tattoos and beers. Yeah. A beard and a tattoo will do it. I don't care. And yeah. Beards, <laughs> and yeah, and for the record, for I think sure. beards are makeup for men because, like, mm-hmm. a beard can change a dude's face in a way. Yes. <laughs> that makes it, like, for instance, Drake. Without a beard, <laughs> without a beard, Drake looks like a black Ross Geller. Jimmy from the grass seat. Oh, Jimmy, really Jimmy. Yes. He is Will Church. Jimmy. Without, <laughs> without a beard, he looks like a sad black Ross yellow to me. But I really can beard, see that. 
But with a beard, Drake could get it every day of the week. <laughs> he looks like a grown ass man. You know what I'm saying? And there are so many people. The dude from you. Oh um, yes, Ted Badgley. Badgley or Badgley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I remember him from Gossip Girl. Mm-hmm. He will always be Dan. He's Dan. <laughs> when and, and I thought he was pretty. Like he has a very, you know, yeah, angular bone structure. Yeah, yeah. Like he's, he's a stunning man, right? Mm-hmm. But he put a beard on. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, Dan. Who are you? <laughs> Where you been all my life, Dan? Like so, it's a beard can change a face, but also. Yeah. It can be a fetish. Like I personally, I don't have a type. Yeah. Um, and as a pansexual person, that, that says a lot. But, but for my masculine partners, I prefer facial hair. Like it, okay. you got to be, I can't even think of a person that I'm attracted to that does not have facial hair. Wow. Oh, Besides Barack Obama, but that's, again, power <laughs> dynamic. Who isn't attracted? He's in his own. <laughs> it's a whole different guy. It's like I'm a Barack Obama five. He's had his own <laughs> fetish, his own key fetish category. <laughs> Yeah, he deserves one. Um, So how are fetishes or kinks developed? Is it more nature? Is it more nurture? Is it both? It's both. It's definitely both. Um, Because you never know what's going to turn you on. Like, how do you realize, how does the person that has a foot fetish realize they have a foot fetish? Yes. How does the person that realizes that they're attracted to BBWs, big, beautiful women, under like even come to that conclusion right Right. and so sometimes it's like they're looking at porn or they're looking at a movie or some sort of media and they find themselves being aroused by that specific media um and so that would be how much of that is nature and how much is that is that is nurture right and so i definitely think it's a group effort i was curious too i think i asked dr drew about this at one point years ago but you know foot fetishes have become so popular and yet we don't hear that much about like an elbow fetish or a kneecap fetish or a there kneecap. there are things those are things and i will tell you oh interesting when, if you put like i have a tattoo on my elbow so oh, if okay. you tattoos become erogenous zones mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of that re- re- repeated needle to skin and then it's sort of like it's an unconscious a subconscious area of focus for you but if your partner begins to kiss and lick on your tattoos you it it feels different to you than if they like I have a tattoo on this side of my shoulder and I don't have one over here. If someone puts their mouth on this shoulder, it goes down. If they put it over here, it's it's, it's cute, but it doesn't hit the same. So, oh, I know what I'm this? doing tonight. <laughs> so the thing for you, and they're fresh. <laughs> listen, okay, well, well, wait till they're healed. Now, are they healed? Yeah, yeah. Fresh okay. is in the last like several months. <laughs> okay, yes. So what happens is it also gives your partner something to focus on. They can trace the tattoo with their tongue, and so it can be very intentional. This tattoo right here, I have had this t- tattoo kissed and licked on, and I thought I was going to die. Oh, wow. I was just like, please stop doing that because we are in public. And wow. Is, like, you know what I'm saying? It was yeah. so good. This elbow don't look, it don't do nothing. It's nothing. This one, oh my God. So, th- so, and it may, so it may be the tattoo fetish of it all, right? Of how I discovered that that's a thing. Mm-hmm. This elbow is not the same as this elbow, right? Right. But there are different like fetishes of different parts of the body, like the knees. Um, the elbow is called the weenus. The skin on the elbow is called the weenus. Yeah. <laughs> so like the weenus fetish. Um, yeah. You know, necks, nipples, ears, mm-hmm. mouths, all of those things. There's so many different kinds of fetishes. And even with a foot fetish, it's levels to that, right? Like some people like, oh, I just love pretty toes and a nice shoe. Like that's just some sexy shit. Mm-hmm. Some people actually want to put their dick in the shoe. Some people yeah. actually want to put like a, a a hollow dildo on the heel of the shoe and be fucked with it. Some people that's a shoe fetish, that's yeah. not necessarily a foot fetish, but or some people want you to like put your feet together and like stroke their penis with your feet. Like so it's so many levels to fetishes as well. Yeah. Um that it's just really interesting how they develop and how they are expressed. Yeah. Oh wow. What what are some of the most unique fetishes or kinks that you've come across in your line of work that you really haven't heard of much? Um well, I I know people that have like splooshing fetishes, which is food fetish, right? But this one uh client, he actually liked to make like cake batter and put it in like a long jar and just like fuck the cake batter. Mm. And like I was an like, American oh. pie type of moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. but it was 
batter though, not like the warm pie or the warm right. cake. Like the, and I feel like aesthetically that makes sense because he still has the confines of the long jar, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, for whatever orifice he's trying to imagine that it is. And then you also get like the texture of the cake batter and the sounds and all, all that. So I mean, I was like, in my head, that is a great alternative if you're looking for, you know. But yeah, the cake batter one was weird and he it was very specific. It has to be cake batter. It can't be like biscuit batter or pancake batter. I guess there's like a specific texture that he's looking for. Um, he doesn't put it in the microwave. Or like It was really like that much, like that. Or um, a guy that used to fuck watermelons. Watermelon. Oh, that seems like it could hurt. Yeah, that's not. I, I, didn't, I, I don't know that they were seedless or not. We just, He just said watermelons. <laughs> I didn't. It didn't, it didn't, we talked about other things, but he was. But we, what we were talking about was um, he he wanted to tell his partner about his fetish, and he wanted his partner to like hold the watermelon, like. Oh. And so we were talking more about how he could introduce that to his partner, and less about the fetish itself. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I was like, okay, because I was, I I had so many questions, but I was like. Is it, are they seedless? Is it like a sweet watermelon? Is do you eat the watermelon after? Yeah. Um. He they do. Eat, he does eat the watermelon. Yeah. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He didn't ejaculate in the watermelon. He just fucked with. Interesting. And then, he, and then you know, it's a snack after, I guess. But those are the two that really stand out, and they're food oriented. And I think it's important to point out that um, splooshing and sex with food can get very, very complicated very quickly. Um, for internal for people with vulvas. Yeah. Um, for penises, you know, you can rinse it off and it's fine. Um, with internal food, it's very complicated very quickly. And so I always tell people to make sure that there's no sugar, fructose, sucrose, any of that involved in it. Um, if, if you're inserting it into your body, try to put it in a condom first and then insert so that you're not actually getting any transference. Um, and just make sure you're cleaning, you know, with soap and water afterwards because you're going to be at the doctor trying to explain why you got fruit loops in your pussy and <laughs> no one's going to be able, you know what I'm saying? And it's, and that's why people participate in fetishes and get, and get sick and stuff because they don't want to go to the doctor if something goes awry. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, if you begin with the end in mind and put the fruit loops in a condom first, yeah. then, you know, you can kind of have a better outcome. Um, and I don't want, I don't want people to feel like it's a shamey kind of situation. People get right. caught up in their fetishes or what people are going to think. But in real life, if you prepare yourself to enjoy your fetishes in happy, healthy, satisfying ways, then the, the shame and stigma don't really exist in the same way. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You mentioned approaching a partner about a fetish. How would you mm-hmm. recommend somebody do that if they are really shameful about it? They've never told their partner. What are some steps to take? Um, first, I would say make sure it's something that you want to share. Because a lot of times fetishes can be very private, especially the ones that people feel a certain protectiveness around, right? Mm -hmm. So make sure that it's a fetish that you want to share. Make sure it's something that you want to invite someone else into. Um, Because maybe they're thinking that their partner will be freaked out or grossed out or turned off or what have you. So be clear that you want to share it. Um, And then I would suggest showing them some sort of media around the fetish if it's something uh, maybe more commonplace. You, you can Google like movies with balloon fetish or movies with clown fetish or movie with whatever. And you can like, you know, in this day and age on the internet, you can like watch the movie together and be like, oh, babe, what do you think about that? To kind of get their reaction. So it's not you first. Oh, smart. Right? Yeah. And then based on their reaction, decide if you want to move forward. Or um, there are lots of like shows like, you know, Sex Cells and, and other shows like that that may highlight something. That you're into so just i would say get some sort of media that's a third party and then like watch it with them and be like what did you think about that or and i always fall on the sword for this for people listen if you don't know if you can't find media or you have something that you want to talk to your partner about dm me and ask and let me know and then i'll make a video about it and post it on instagram or youtube and you can be like oh my god i saw this video watch this and tell me what you think because then it's still not you you know, it's yeah. it's if you you're approaching it to kind of see what their what their response is going to be before you just kind of open up your coat and show them it's you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Because I think the biggest part of the shame and stigma for people is that they're going to be rejected once they share. Yeah. So that kind of takes the onus off of you having to be the person with this desire 
and just kind of gauging your partner's reaction as a result. Yeah, that's great advice. Oh, good. What a nice service that is for people too. <laughs> I know. I mean, you, just DM you. you might be getting a lot of DMs from us. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm with it because it gives me content too, right? That's like lazy yeah, content great. creation, but it's the thing. And I love um, my public health brain. I love priority population generated stuff. I love population led things. I can come in here and tell y'all what I think y'all want to know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I may be like way over here and you want to know what's over here. So if, if I have the kind of feedback to kind of guide what I'm presenting, then I know I'm telling people things they want to hear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What are a few things that you could recommend to people who are looking to broaden their sexual horizons? Maybe people who aren't super tapped into their fetishes or kinks or anything like that. Maybe, you know, long-term couples, people who maybe have fallen into a rut, you know, mm, 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 anything like vanilla, that. Vanilla folk. Vanilla. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I say this because people, because I'm a sexologist, people think that I do all the things, okay? Knowing all the things, and doing all the things very different. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> and I, I tell you, I'm not vanilla, but I'm like cookies and cream. <laughs> like, like, there's a, mostly vanilla, but there's a little razzle doubtful, right? I'm not out here. You know, We're not out here Rocky Road. We're not. At all. At all. <laughs> no. you know, cook, maybe mint chip on a good day. Yeah. You know, we are not. That's not of everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah none of that. Um, <laughs> So people are like uh, surprised to see what my lies in the sand are, but I'm just like, I ain't doing it. Um, but for people that are like, like you said, long-term couples, things like that, or you're just kind of curious to where to start, the first two, the, I, I can tell you probably five things that are like low-hanging fruits that people probably don't even think of. The first one is change the time of day that you're having sex. Mm. Ah, that's a great one. most of us that have sex at night. Yeah, <laughs> right? that's a great um, one. Daytime sex is the best. Uh, yeah. Especially people with kids. Oh my God. These kids will ruin it for you, okay? When yeah. your kids are at school, <laughs> yeah, working from home now, or what have you, take a PTO day, whatever you got to do, but change the time of day that you're having sex. Change the part of your home that you're having sex in. Oh, yeah, you yeah, pay yeah. for the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give the kitchen floor some action. See what the couch is talking about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's very, very important. Also get like a hotel or something. Um, I really want a sponsorship from these people, but dayuse.com for my American people. Mm -hmm. uh, dayuse.com is where you can get a hotel in the daytime from like nine to three, oh. like 10 to five. And it's a different rate because it's not overnight. Oh my Hell God. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's you can do like day pad. use. Yeah, yeah like a, yes. basically. And it's yes. like dayuse.com. It started during the pandemic. because People wanted to get out of the house and work, right? It's work. Uh, <laughs> but you can like take a PTO day and you and your partner go to dayuse.com and get a hotel and so now you're not in your home and it's in the daytime it's a whole nother setting you know yeah. and you look different in a hotel because you don't have to clean up later so if yeah. you want to like play with like squirting or different like things like that that that's the time to do it because you don't have to clean it up right yeah. so that's two change where and change when yeah does the receptionist give you like a little wink when they hand you your card when <laughs> I they mean no it? they don't because they don't know what it's for like I have a um I have a, a a friend that's a hairstylist, natural hairstylist, so she has braids and stuff like that. That shit takes like five hours. She uses day oh. use to do hair because she don't want people coming to her house, but also she's not comfortable coming to someone else's house, oh, I right? Know. I have yeah. a massage therapy friend that she books all her massages on certain days and she uses day use during those massage times. This is it. fascinating. Oh so my God, good. what a great takeaway, yeah. I yeah, so it's like you know, so you never know what people are doing, right? They yes. can, you can do it. It's great for photo shoots. Um, I'm getting ready to re-record all my webinars to, to make them on-demand webinars, and I so I'm going to do a day use for that because the rideology class and the strokeology class are taught in the bedroom, right? So right. I'm going to, you know, so I have a set now. It's not my house. Um, yes. So so changing the time that they have sex, changing the where you have sex, uh, changing up the positions. A lot of times we stick to the three one, the main three that get us together, right? <laughs> but but you never know what lifting a leg will do or changing the arch of the back will do or something like that. So that's another one. And that's what, those are the three free ones, right? The next one I would say maybe add some music, like create a playlist because you never, like sometimes you're like making love. So it's like this soft, sensual music. 
but then trap music come on and you trying to fuck like you are in, you know, like it's your last day before you turn yourself in before the police, the police you know? So yeah. it just, you know, the music can dictate the tempo, can dictate the you know, what you can get away with. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Um, uh, lubricant, because <laughs> people don't, people think that lubricant is a commentary on your sexual function or your ability to get wet or what have you. And I'm here to tell you that not only is lubricant a safer sex practice because it reduces friction, uh, but it creates a smoother ride between you and whoever or whatever you're having sex with. And I don't care if you are Miss Aquafina Wapity Wap 2023. <laughs> that thing hits different with the ceiling fan on. Okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> especially if you're like using condoms and stuff like that, because rubber, rubber is, will dry you out. So it's like working against your body. So lubricant is your friend. And I'm not saying like, you know, a whole, you know, you don't have to do the whole thing. You just like a dime size amount. Um, I have, you know, those automatic hand soap dispensers. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have one of those next to my bed full of food. You are oh, oh, that's that's real. That's incredible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> yeah, just Perfect. enough to keep the party going. Right. Amazing. And so you don't oh have to God. kind of think about it and it becomes part of the act, especially when I hear that looks like it. If he's on my side of the bed, I'm like, okay, that's what, we, that's what we're doing. All right. You know, like yeah. a little, little opera and conditioning in there. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. A little, a little Pavlovian. <laughs> Anybody ever think that uh, hand sanitizer and said him be like, wait a minute. <laughs> in my bedroom, that people don't go in my bedroom. Okay. There you right. Go. Right. You know, and my, my kids, the seven-year-old doesn't mess with anything on my side of the bed. Um, and, and the older kids know better. <laughs> yeah. Because we we, we we respect closed doors in my house. So yeah. <laughs> if, if your door is closed, I'm going to knock first. I expect you to knock first if my door is closed. Or your therapy bill just went up a couple thousand dollars. It's up to you. <laughs> up to you. The choice is yours. Um, and then adding sex toys. Adding sex toys, I think, is something that people forget about. Because when people think about sex toys, they think about big, dick-shaped vibrators or dildos. Mm-hmm. And they're like a little bullet, you know, goes a long way. If you you put, you know, if you're if you have a vulva and you're having insertive, you know, sex, you put a bullet on your clit while you're getting stroked and it's a game changer. If you are, if you have, if you're, if you have, if both of y'all have penises, you put some lube on your testicles and put a bullet down there while you're getting fucked, it's a game changer. Like also people with penises, yeah. nair your balls and put lube on your balls when you're getting ready to have sex. I don't care what kind of sex you're having. I don't care if you are having sex with a person with a vulva or a penis, or you're having anal sex, or you're having oral sex, lube up your balls because your balls are super sensitive. And when you have that lubricant on there, it just kind of amplifies the sensation. Oh, okay. So interesting. interesting. Okay. But those are great ways to kind of figure out what you like. And then you can kind of explore that way. Get into talking about um, the way you like to be talked to when you're having sex, right? Like, you know, the little dirty talk. Those are conversations that you have upright with clothes on first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't just start springing stuff on people. You know, (laughs) uh, be like, is there anything that you don't want me to call? You You know what I'm saying? Like, is is there anything that's a hard no? What are some hard yeses? What are some things that you think you may like in the throes of passion that you may, like, you can call me a bitch, but I got to be a pretty bitch. I got to be a sexy bitch. I got to be, you know, something like that. You know, a well-placed good girl goes a long way with a lot of people. Sometimes yeah. it's a it's a no for people. A good girl is a no for people. So you kind of got to just kind of talk about those things too. Yeah. Um, but I think that the, the the sexy time talk and sex toys and lubricant, and like I said, changing your time, date, place, location, all of those things will help you jumpstart out of a rut or just start to explore your uh, desires and, and preferences. Yeah. Oh, those are so good. I know. So good. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sitting, taking notes over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here so excited for our listeners to hear this episode. I just I just love this episode because we haven't done a, a sex episode in a long time. And yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, we've never done a fetish kink one, like devoted right. to it, which is so important. And w- what about somebody who is, you know, they, they don't have a partner and they truly mm-hmm. don't know where to start when it comes to exploring different fetishes and kinks. They really don't know what they like yet. What are some okay. like very first steps somebody could take and maybe even releasing the shame around exploring themselves and their bodies and, and interests in that way? Um, I think it depends on the person. So honestly, 
my first answer would be hire a sex worker. If you don't have a partner, I would say hire a sex worker because this is a trained professional. Well, in 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 my mind, they're a professional. Sex work is work. Um, so they have a different set of understandings and lived experiences that can help inform you and in how you explore your fetishes and kinks. So they may be able to be a good support for that. Um, and then it's harder to explore a kink or fetish alone if you don't know what where you you know what you want to do. Um, so I would first and foremost say hire hire a sex worker if you're actually in, in the application phase of like, this is something I might like um, and you don't have a partner, I would suggest doing something like that. Um, but then like, there's things like, you know, autoerotic dissociation, which is like choking yourself, right? There are ways to experience that. At, um, if it, But looking at what your fetishes and kinks may be and how you can explore some of those by yourself or with a partner. Some of them require a some of them not so much so it just depends on like leather and you know all those types of things require another person typically um but like bondage may not there are things you can tie your own feet up you know you can tie you can um kind of like tie one of your hands to your feet or have like a tight corset on under your clothing and feel that tight held together feeling like so there's some different ways that you can explore it just depends uh on what it is um but like a lot of people, like I said, choking and spanking are very common um, kinks that people are into. And people think, oh, I got to go buy a leash now. Or I got to go buy a, you know, and you don't. You can take like your nightgown and pull it up and kind of choke that way. Mm -hmm. There's a right and wrong way to choke people. Um, I know people may not know that, but there's a right and wrong way to choke someone. Can you talk uh, about that? Yeah. So like if you, I, was, I know it was not, some are watching, some are listening. Mm -hmm. So if you hold your hand, palm facing your face mm -hmm. and the space between your thumb and your forefinger, that little L shape, you want to align the middle of that L shape with the chin of the person that you want to choke. And you're going to stroke down the throat till you get to the neck. And then you want to squeeze. You want to bring your fingers and your thumb together. You want to restrict the air, not constrict the air. A lot of times you want to put their hands around the throat and press down. That is going to constrict and close the airway. That is attempted murder. That's not a choke. Okay. That's something different. That's a case. Yeah. Okay. So you want to restrict. You want to squeeze instead of press. Okay. Yeah. So like if you want to choke somebody with like a, 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 you know, tie or a rope or a satin scarf or whatever, you want to wrap it around their neck one time and then pull the sides so it kind of squeezes. You don't want to push down over their throat and press because that's going to constrict. Oh my gosh. What a game. <laughs> game. Yeah, I got to have a combo with my husband tonight. <laughs> I don't wait, even wait, wanna, Why don't we all want another game this? changer? If you, put, if you put a finger vibe on your hand when you choke somebody, it adds a little rumble <gasps> to the choke. Ooh. Oh, wow. God damn. Amazing. <laughs> oh, do you have any more hacks like that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything you want to throw at us, that would be great. So, like, this is, I mean, so again, some are watching, some are listening. I have a frisky finger um, vibe on my finger. It's a texture, it's a remote control, not remote control, I'm sorry, wireless, rechargeable, waterproof bullet with a textured silicone sleeve and a finger loop. So, you just put your finger through the loop and you can use it, right? So, it's great to use on a vulva for self pleasure. It's great to use in addition to uh, oral sex on a penis. You can ha have it stroking oh, around so the penis. Yeah. You can use it on the testicles during oral sex. If they're masturbating and they have, a, if you have a penis and you're masturbating, you can have the, um, you could use it to stroke the shaft or you can hold your testicles and masturbate, stroke the shaft with the other hand. Um, if you're having insertive sex and they, you got the, your shoulders over their legs, I mean, you got your legs over their shoulders, they can be inserting their penis and have the bullet on their thumb and be stroking the clit simultaneously. Um, it also makes great nipple play. Like if you have it in your hands, you can like, you know, press your own nipples because the nipples are connected to the same part of the brain as the genitals. So nipple orgasms are a thing. Um, and like I said, you can add it as a rumble to a choke and all of that. So th these types of toys, a finger vibe is the most versatile sex toy that you're ever going to experience. And it makes it easier to bring into the bedroom if you're in a heterosexual relationship with a man. Because the main reason that heterosexual Sexual men don't like sex toys in the bedroom is because in their mind they're dick shaped and they're bigger than them. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is about two and a half inches tall. Yeah. It's not even an inch thick. So if this is bigger than him, you already love him. He is already your person. And it doesn't matter, right? right? But this is a great day. It's purple. It comes in purple and pink. It's like really, you know, it's like a cutesy little situation. But it's a great way to tell to show your partner that sex toys are teammates, not competitors. Mm. Oh, that's great. What that a great is, quote. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you have opinions on vibrators making people less sensitive or kind of rolling um, so, out those nerves? Absolutely. So it's a yes and no answer because the main reason that people get desensitized um, when using vibrators is because they're not using lubricant. Uh, okay. That's the main reason because lubricant, again, creates a smoother ride and a barrier between you and whoever or whatever you're having sex with. Also, if you know that the setting number three is the one that's going to get you there, that doesn't mean start on setting three. Mm -hmm. Start on setting one, work your way up to setting three. Got it. Okay. Also, people like, if you want to masturbate before you go to bed, like that's part of your sleep routine. Sometimes if it's part of your routine, you're not aroused. You just know that you're doing it. And when you masturbate with things that vibrate, without lubricant and you're not aroused it's like a uh, cold muscles mm -hmm. yeah so you're not warmed up where there's no you know the blood flow the pectoral erection or the penile erection is not the same um and so that also happens now the mental aspect of having sex with toys and then having sex with a person there's a shift in that as well sometimes for people because sex toys are not pleasure tools are not meant to replicate human interaction like it's a, a toy can't smack your ass and pull your hair right so it's not going to be the same kind of experience. So don't expect the pleasure tool to show up like a partner and don't accept, expect your partner to show up like the pleasure tool. Mm, got it. Yeah. And so that desensitization happens mentally because maybe you're just so used to your toy. You don't know how to engage with a partner in the same way. It's because you don't have to worry about the toy's feelings or their arousal or any of that. Right. And so it's a different kind of desensitization. Right. <laughs> uh, in that regard but yeah no just i think using lubricant um also people don't clean their sex toys Ugh. and you should clean them before and after use and i know you're like oh well you know people are like well i use it on me it's just me i'm the only one using it but you rinse off your toothbrush twice yeah. you rinse your toothbrush off before you put the toothpaste on there you put the toothpaste on there you rinse it again then you brush your teeth then you rinse it out it's like using your if you use your toothbrush and never rinsed it out it's yeah. just you yeah. using it yeah, no. Right. Oh. No one would ever do that. Right. We do it subconsciously. If, if, if I was like, don't rinse your toothbrush one time, don't rinse it, you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like innate in how we use our toothbrush, right? So it needs to become innate in how we use our pleasure tools as well. You have to clean them because if you don't clean them, they're going to malfunction. You can get, make yourself sick. You can compromise your sexual health and your pH balance and stuff. But people don't realize that. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's so important. Have you ever worked with a clients or client who um, you are noticing maybe their kink or fetish is becoming more of an obsession or addiction and it's kind of going down a path where they might need to like seek a different type of support for that? Um, I haven't experienced that firsthand, but I definitely I'm not a, I'm not a therapist and I tell people this all the time because I have a master of social work. I'm trained in therapeutic practice in therapeutic framework, but I am a macro practice girl. I am very much programming curriculum workshops. <laughs> workbooks. I don't want to sit with a bunch of people all day. Um, so I automatically refer out anyway. But I think that it's important for people to recognize for themselves what is an addiction for them. So the most people, the, the litmus test for an addiction is, are you missing out on work? Are you missing out on, are you skipping social events to do whatever this is? Are you investing all your money into whatever this is? Um, are you losing sleep and missing meals to participate in whatever this is? At that point, you do need to seek professional help and guidance around whatever it is, be it something sexually um, sexually connected or otherwise. And sex addiction is uh, and porn addiction and things like that are usually indicators of other types of mental wellness challenges, not necessarily sex addiction because I'm of the school of thought that doesn't think that sex addiction is a thing. It's a it's an indicator of something else. It's like the low impulse control um and dopamine addiction to you know to something. It's a mm -hmm. different it's a symptom, not not the not the illness. So yeah. um 
Those are great. So there's that, right? Yeah. Thank but you. yeah, I haven't had, I have not experienced that firsthand. Uh, and I'm glad that I haven't at this point, but I would definitely refer out um, because there needs to be some professional guidance for folk. And I, I'm very much a harm reductive standpoint. So I really try to like, I'm trauma informed, I'm harm reduction, I'm stigma eradication. And so I try to make sure people feel safe and comfortable, but also making sure I put the right people in the right places to, for them to get support they need. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned briefly that you do a rideology course and mm -hmm. a class and a strokeology class. Can uh -huh. you talk about those? <laughs> So rideology is my, my dick riding class. And I teach people how to ride dick with their vagina, their anus, or to caress two vulvas together. And when I came up with the class, I, I am my, my priority population. So I came up with the class. I took into consideration impact on the knees, back, and hips. I took into consideration the body size of the people having the sex. I took into consideration range of motion and uh, the size of the dick or dildo in play. Um, because those are the things, right? You get on top, you on top for a hot 20 seconds, your knee is popping, your check engine light then came on, like you are <laughs> not happy, right? <laughs> so I created these, well, I didn't create these positions, but I kind of figured them out myself and I want to teach people, like I'm sure they're not new, you know, positions are not new. Um, but I have them, it kind of shifts your weight distribution to make you comfortable. It's all about confidence, control, and stamina. So you get confident because you have like the technical instruction of knowing why this position feels good in your body. You have the confidence because you know that you can do it and that you can, you know, you you're, you have all these different things going on that you know that you're confident in it. You've taken a whole class about it. And then the stamina is being able to get up there and stay up there. And I tell people, I guarantee you can ride dick for at least four minutes uninterrupted after this workshop. And four minutes is a long time in sex time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, and then the strokeology is for people with penises and people that wear strap ups. Um, and it helps them with different positions and ways to create negative space uh, in the body to help make the penis feel larger, to help the penis be more stiff um, and just kind of help them with their confidence, control and stamina. And when I teach any workshop, I teach it from the perspective of the pleasure of the person performing that act, because oftentimes we go into men do too, go into the into the act wanting to please our partner. Mm -hmm. And therefore our pleasure gets put on the back burner. And your pleasure is your responsibility. So you have to be able to take control of your own pleasure because if you don't know what your pleasure scripts are and what feels good to you, how can you communicate that to your partner? Right, right. Right. Yeah. So I, I really like so when I'm teaching, I had this guy say, Oh, I heard you teach blowjob classes. You think that's right? You need to teach these girls how to please their men. And I was like, ooh, actually, don't care about your pleasure, guy. Like, that's not what it's for. <laughs> I'm teaching people to enjoy performing oral sex on their partners because I teach oral sex on a penis and oral sex on a vulva, too. So the blowjob class is called Lick, and the uh, vulva kissing class is called Lip Service. And it's from the perspective of the person performing the act. I, I say, if you have not reached orgasm from performing oral sex, your life is incomplete. Interesting. Ooh. So you're and saying so that I, we should be coming as we're yes. getting ahead. Yes. Wow. Like, and that's, because, something, that's something as simple as adding a sex toy, like using, you're stimulating yourself while you're giving pleasure to your partner. Because again, that operant conditioning, that Pavlovian response is yeah. now you have this sort of circuitous um, possibility of giving and receiving pleasure simultaneously. Yeah. Rules, right. After a while, you may not even need the toy anymore or the pleasure tool to stimulate you, but you have that sort of understanding of when I'm performing, I'm also receiving. Yeah. You can reach orgasm in that way. And that is with whether you're performing on a, on a penis or a bowl. Yeah. Cause I like personally have never loved um, 69ing mm. because I'm like mm -hmm. too, I, I, I don't know, maybe just the physics yeah, of I'm it. Same. Yeah, I just, it's never been I my favorite focus. thing. I yes. can't focus on receiving or giving. Like, who's, what's happening? Right, right. But it's like, neither one is, is no, great. So, but, and I think with that, you kind of have to take turns. And I think with 69 is, we we, we correlate 69 with being simultaneous. Yeah, but you yeah. you gotta yeah. just kind of gotta take turns. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's more of a seesaw than right. a than a you know actual 69 kind of thing. Yeah, but Way more fun. Yeah, that makes Yeah, sense. a seesaw would be made more. Like, Bob in for Apple. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
<laughs> so that's what if we if we reimagine it as a seesaw uh, as opposed to a consistent, constant engaging of the mouth with the genitals. Mm -hmm. But you can't focus on getting pleasure if you're trying to get pleasure. It's but when you when you're doing it in the position of you're performing oral sex on your partner and you're stimulating yourself, you can sort of gauge and stop and start and you know what's gonna happen next because you're in control. And right. again, that goes to that confidence, control, and stamina. Yeah. Okay, I guess I do have one more question based on something you just brought up. So what do you what do you think is the number one mistake that both men and women make in giving oral sex? I think the number one mistake that people make is that they're too in their head. Mm. They're like, oh, I need to cuff the balls and stroke the shaft and spread the lips and do the this and the, you know, they're in their mind of what they should do. Yeah. <clears throat> and the easiest way that I tell people to get around that is to get a song in your head, right? A song that makes you feel confident. People say, oh, I'm gonna get a sexy song. When you drill down on sexy, the words that come up are attractive, beautiful, confident, intelligent, stylish, funny. Think of those, right? So yeah. think of a song in your head that makes you feel like that bitch. Like you get, like you get dressed and you walking down the street and a cape is flying behind you. <laughs> what song is playing, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's your jam. So now, whether you rock in headphones, which is the thighs, or you rock in a mic, which is a penis. Yeah. You have a song in your head. <laughs> now the, the song gives you a rhythm to perform to, so you get your breathing to match, yeah. right? You can mouth the lips. You can mouth the words or hum the words into your partner's body, which is going to feel amazing to them. You start to give, they start to match your rhythm as well, right? So it gives you this whole, I, say, I tell people all the time, oral sex is performance art. And performance art needs a song. So now you have this sort of whole production that has become oral sex. And you're not in your head of, oh, I got to do this. Because you're jamming right now. You're like, oh, and you're doing what feels good to you because the song has you in a good space. Yeah. Oh, my God. So you're not thinking, one of the most oh, this brilliant thing. things I've ever heard. I'm like, <laughs> this is one of the most brilliant fucking things. <laughs> I've ever heard, which I honestly didn't know if I would be saying on this episode. And that's just like, wow, it's brilliant. Everything you just said is brilliant. Like you you really know how to get people out of their head and into their body in such simple, like fun, approachable ways. Thank like, you. You really have a gift. I mean. Yeah, you, you, you have a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you are a penis genius. Yes, you are. I mean, and I sell these, you know, this is good a year, honey. I sell these. It comes in hoodie form. It comes in t-shirt form. I love it. Because my bachelor's is in business. So I use that degree every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yes. So, love I mean, but I love, I really do. I love what I do. I love connecting people to pleasure with confidence. I love expanding people's understanding of sexuality, pleasure, and health. Like, I am so grateful that this is what I get to do every day. Yeah. That's so awesome. It shows oh, how passionate you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we, Delaney and I do the thing that we love for a living too. And it's, uh, it's, there's nothing better. So we love having guests on who feel the same way about what they do. Yes. And I'm glad. Like, I, um, I know, um, I, I, when I kind of got the synopsis of the podcast and everything, it's like, like oh, this, they use humor to talk about things. And I use humor to talk about things. I really, I, I want to do, I want to do like a, I want to do like stand up comedy. Yeah. I can see. But I feel like I sure. wouldn't be funny because I'm trying. Oh, you know? no, you should, you should. Kevin I and I, I, would, I'm sorry, I feel go ahead. like I, no, you're fine. I, I feel like I wouldn't be funny, but I, so I have like science and whole shit is the framework that I use, right? And I'm working on my book called Science and whole shit. I own scienceandhoeshit.com. Don't go looking. It's nothing on it at the moment, but <laughs> I want to like do like a one woman show called Science and whole shit where I just get on stage and do like my sex ed spiel yeah. with all my jokes in it. So I'm still educating. Yeah. But also entertaining. Like, I, I, I kind of want to do that. But I'm scared that I'm going to fail. And failures. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm scared I'm not going to be good at it. And I don't like not being good at it. You will not fail at that. Like, <laughs> you, you just did that on this episode. This was education entertainment. We were laughing our asses off the entire time. I yeah. learned so, like, we learned so much from this episode. <laughs> I will come to that one woman show immediately. Yes. Where can yes. I free buy my ticket? Yes. <laughs> you have I'm to thinking about it. Maybe for 2024. I have, cause I have so much on my plate for 2023. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. I think I might do it in 2023. You have to do yeah. it. It's you're already doing it. It's just a different, different form. Right. And then I think yeah. I would also connect to a different audience if I did it that way as well, because yeah. Like, what? 
Science and shit, what? You know, so. It's oh, gonna be yeah. Like the best TED Talk anybody's ever seen. <laughs> I want a TED Talk so bad. I just don't know what I would talk about specifically because I'm like, I feel like I'm all over the place. And so I don't know, you know, TED Talks are very succinct about a specific thing. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I haven't figured out how to tailor all of the things into a very succinct. Like, I know I connect people to pleasure with confidence, but how yeah. I do it in so many different ways that I, I have not figured out how to succinctly explain in TED Talk ability mm -hmm. what that would look like. Because I really want a TED Talk so bad. And I wanted to say, like, you know, they have a like TED behind you. Yeah. I want to say sex behind me. And yeah. I want to <laughs> And do my TED talk, and then like I just put it on YouTube myself. Hell, I but I haven't figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I it out. So, oh my, my god! You know, maybe I can do like a series of TED, of sex. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah. That way I'm I don't gonna, have to narrow it down. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be laughing about going to the doctor and finding Fruit Loops in your pussy. And, <laughs> like that line will make me laugh for a week. So truly, <laughs> yeah. Please don't doubt yourself or be afraid to. Yeah. to try something that is performing and with <laughs> your sense of humor and your knowledge it's like it's a truly a brilliant combo and I feel like you're kind of the only person on the planet that could do that <laughs> you know what I mean like that's that qualified to speak to all this and is so funny so please exactly. please do that yeah um I, I kind of had that reputation in my in my industry of being funny um they call me the hip-hop sex I was just because I love music and yeah. I'm always using, like, I speak in song lyrics a lot. Um, and then I'm, I also have a reputation for being the actionable sexologist. Like, I always give people, like, takeaways. And you can do this, 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 and this. And because I feel like if it's not accessible, it's not revolutionary. And I consider myself a revolutionary. Like, yes. I hope. Right. I know currently the people that are getting uh, master's degrees in human sexuality at Widener University are learning about me and my work. I know yeah. that for a fact. Oh, so I'm cool. excited to be able to be like, I want to be like an ancestor, like, you know, uh, 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 on the Mount Rushmore of sexology. You know, <laughs> yes. Like, Dr. Ruth, Sue Johansson, uh, Joycelyn Elders, and me. Yeah. There you go. I mean, <laughs> why not you? Of course it's yeah. good. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah. Good, Goody, where can people find you and your work and all that? Let's direct people to your website and everything. Okay, well, my name is Goody. That is my legal name, G-O-O-D-Y. And everyone asks Goody things. So Ask Goody is where you can find me. A-S-K-G-O-O-D-Y. The website is askgoody.com. The email address is info at askgoody.com. I am Ask Goody on all social media platforms. Anywhere likes can be clicked. Um, even like Venmo and stuff, like all the, <laughs> I'm Ask Goody on everything. Yeah. Um, and it's with, it's Goody with a Y because I tell people Goody with an I-E is plural and there's only one <laughs> that's amazing yes <laughs> i yes. love it oh thank you so much this was one of my favorite episodes ever <laughs> truly yeah. yeah and we've been doing the show for almost six years so what every time we have <laughs> like yeah that is amazing i'm gonna like make myself an award so what i want to do is um if people use code helpless if they go to escudy and decide to buy something if they use code helpless they'll get 20 percent off oh boy I feel like a new woman after that episode. <laughs> I know. I feel like we're both about to tackle our boyfriends and husbands. <laughs> oh, I especially love Goody's tip about taking PTO to go to the hotel for the day and fuck. Like, go get paid to fuck for a day. It'll God be like damn. your own like DIY off camera porn. You know, like yeah. what a great hot tip. <laughs> Talk about yeah, yeah, where everything is like you know based in power and stuff. That's a powerful yeah. feeling. Take PTO and power move baby and get some so yeah fun. so so fun yeah um yeah. we have an itunes review of the episode you want to read it doll yes this is from kelly and it says my favorite podcast ever the girls are amazing funny and they make me feel like they're my friends and it's got a bunch of cookie emojis and a heart oh, thank I you love so much it. kelly thank so, you kelly. so sweet we really yes. appreciate taking the time if you want to leave a review for the podcast um you can just click on the itunes stuff and Click a button, say some stuff, and might get on the show. Yes, it's very <laughs> those simple. Are, those are the exact steps that you can take. <laughs> a couple <laughs> buttons, you know, say something, leave something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have a segment, Del? Um, you know what? I have a little treat myself moment. I um I just uh, uh, bought myself a little birthday gift. And I've just been I've been getting really woo-woo over here in my space. I mean, wow. I really I just got 
Um, I, I did a, um, I went somewhere with my friend recently. We went to uh, this place where they did a sound bath, acupuncture and yoga all in one sitting. It was yeah. like to, to celebrate the um, spring solstice or something like that. And it was at this, um, this center where there's like an acupuncturist, there's a chiropractor, it's like a wellness center. Uh, and it was so cool. Um, you, we started off with like yoga for 30 minutes and then that went into just like laying down and listening to this like sound bath experience and like live singing and chanting and then an acupuncturist came around and put needles in our heads and our and it was so fucking cool Whoa. and I was like god this you know you just feel so good when you just even if you just lie on the floor and yeah. and not do anything for a while when you get up I just felt like so refreshed um so I decided to buy myself a little um, at home like sound bath thing. So I got this like um, uh, like Tibetan um, sound bath. I, I don't know what it's called. I have to I have to figure out the name. And then uh, I got myself a new Oracle deck, and I'm just gonna try to do some more of that like in my day to day because it just felt so fucking great. Yeah. Um, and it's it's crazy how that that noise truly vibrates your whole body. Like you can feel the sensation. Like it's so, it's so weird. You feel that buzzing throughout you. And I'm like, Oh, I want to, I want to be buzzing every day. Yeah. All the different ways I can imagine. I can add that to my, to my routine. So yeah, I just got a little like birthday gift for myself. Uh, in the in the woo department. What about you, Kels? Any, I love uh, any it. updates? Yeah, um, couple good shit. So I this is a small one, but there are great Amazon dupes for Lululemon items. And listen, I also love if I feel like I can make the splurge buying some some new athletic gear from Lululemon. But I did also stock up on some from Amazon, which are like at least half the cost, sometimes a third of the cost. And I've just gotten really into, I've become pretty consistent about going to the gym and I have gotten into that whole psychology mentality of feeling good in the clothes you're wearing to go to the gym. Yes. I used to wear like my scrubbiest clothes to go work out. I would wear just like really baggy shirts, things with holes in them. And then I would like look in the mirror at the gym and not feel great about myself. And that's kind of the opposite of why you're going. Right. So I've just been really investing lately in, in having workout clothing that makes me feel good. So I, I got some new ones of that. I love them. And, uh, and then another little kind of good shit. I know I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that the special crossed half a million views over the weekend. And I also sold out six shows, six shows at Acme Comedy Company here in Minneapolis. And I've oh. never sold out an entire like six show week before. The Earlier this year, I had sold out like some four show weekends and stuff like that. But to look on a website and see six shows being sold out is such a wonderful feeling. And there were so many sweet helpsters that came out. I loved getting to meet you guys. I loved getting to hug you, take some pictures. It just, it was like a really feel good week uh, here in Minneapolis. So thank you to the helpsters that came out and just to everybody who's been supporting comedy stuff lately. It's been really, really nice. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Thanks. Um, all right, guys. Well, please go follow Ask Goody on all her socials. Uh, connect with her if you want on askgoody.com. And see you guys in Uncasville this weekend and then Salt Lake City the weekend after that. So um, get your tickets. Beautiful. DelaneyFisher.com for the Minimalist Business Podcast and other uh, resources for career pivots and building a business and all that good stuff. Amazing. All right, guys. We love you. We'll talk to you next week. Love ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Self Helpless Podcast. You can find our Patreon community, merch, and our individual work at selfhelplesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you shared this episode with a friend or feel free to post it on Instagram and tag at selfhelplesspodcast so we can repost you and say thank you. 